On today's show, we learn more about the Tesla Model Y's cool features as more and more people pick them up. Norway EV sales now top 68% of all new cars sold. And production plans for Ford suggests that gas guzzlers will be the norm, unfortunately, for quite the while. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we're 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another Ecotech Roundup show. We are still socially distancing ourselves, but thanks to the wonders of the internet, I can bring you the ray of hope and sunshine that is the latest clean car and energy news without anyone needing to leave the house. Two weeks ago, I told you that Model Y was about to start deliveries and, despite the current crisis, that's exactly what happened. And thanks to those deliveries, we're learning more about the Model Y and some of its unique and cool features. In addition to the new interior seating layout and cubby holes that the Y gains over the Model 3, Model Y also gains a new heating system with a brand new heat pump that Elon Musk said is, quote, next level work. Rather than convert electricity into heat, it uses electricity to pull heat from outside and bring it into the vehicle in a kind of reverse air conditioning setup. It's more efficient than a resistive heater, which means less range loss to heating the car in winter. Also worth pointing out is the new heater elements for Tesla's autopilot sensors, ensuring the car can still operate in cold weather. We've been watching the market share for electric vehicles grow around the world for many years, but there's nowhere in the world that's enjoyed the EV market dominance that Norway has. And now, according to the latest data from February this year, 68% of all new cars sold were plug-in vehicles, with the Audi e-tron topping the new car sale charts. Meanwhile, Norway's neighbour Sweden, which has lagged behind Norway quite considerably, has reached a plug-in vehicle market penetration of 26% during the same month. That's a long way behind Norway, but so very much ahead of the rest of the world. And while Sweden's top three plug-in vehicles were actually plug-in hybrids, it shows that the days of the internal combustion engine in Scandinavia are indeed numbered. Direct to customer sales, where an automaker is allowed to sell its vehicles directly to customers without the need for a middleman auto dealer, are for the most part not allowed in the US because of powerful lobbying from auto dealer unions. Tesla has enjoyed some successes changing that, receiving special dispensation in certain US states to operate a direct sales model. But now we can add Rivian to the list of automakers allowed to do that after a new law passed by the state of Colorado and lobbied on by Rivian specifically allows electric vehicle companies to participate in direct to customer sales models. It's good to see legislators realize that electric car buyers aren't interested in so-called traditional auto dealer franchises, especially when automakers are not keen on selling EVs and neither are the dealers. New reports coming from Germany suggest that Volkswagen is continuing to suffer major issues with the software in its ID3 electric car, with one report suggesting that Volkswagen is currently looking to deliver cars without certain functionality and then edit later via over-the-air software updates, just like Tesla does. But while Volkswagen is publicly reiterating that it plans to deliver vehicles on schedule, Insiders report issues with a lack of suitable staff capable to work on the car's complex and multiple computer systems. The biggest issue, apparently, is the speed at which the car was designed, which has resulted in a hastily made and not well thought out system software architecture. Chinese company Ehang has received an operational flight permit from the Civil Aviation Authority of Norway, meaning that it can go ahead with its flight testing of its Ehang 216 electric vertical takeoff and landing craft in the country. Eventually, the company hopes to obtain permits for similar tests in other European countries. But what is perhaps interesting is the reason why Ehang is so interested in testing in Norway. No, it's got nothing to do with the country's forward-thinking attitude to electric vehicles, but rather the large number of oil and gas platforms just off the nation's coastline. Right now, helicopters are the usual mode of transport 
to and from the oil platforms, but Ehang hopes its electric craft can take over duties from helicopters very soon. GM and Ford have both been working hard to promote their electric vehicle plans for the future, promising us a slew of new electric vehicles. And while that's very commendable, and I can't wait to test some of them, it seems producing electric vehicles is still not really a top priority for either firm. Internal production plans seen by Reuters suggest that both GM and Ford are estimating production volumes of around 320,000 all-electric vehicles per year for North America by 2026, along with 5.2 million SUVs and pickups. The latter equals nearly 87% of all estimated new cars made by the firms in 2026. Look, I really want to cheer on EV commitment, but come on guys, we need more commitment than that. Lilium, the company behind the all-electric VTOL Lilium Jet, has completed its latest round of funding, securing a total of $240 million. Despite the current crisis, the electric air company hopes to operate a series of regional electric air services by the end of 2025. This is great news for the company, which suffered a setback recently when its first prototype was damaged in a ground fire at a facility in Arizona. As I'm sure many of you are noting, the air quality has been a lot better with fewer traditional airplanes in the air, so it's going to be really important to see companies like Lilium become the new way to fly very soon. While most of us are holed up in some form of social distancing or isolation and aren't actually using our electric cars all that much, an interesting article popped up into my timeline this week that suggests if we all drove electric cars, maybe we'd be able to cope with disasters a little better. It's a solid premise and takes the devastating tsunami and earthquake of March 2011 as a starting point. The author, Peter Lyons, suggests that the Fukushima meltdown could have actually been prevented if enough electric cars were in the vicinity of the reactor, as engineers were scrambling to find backup power and could have used electric cars to power the cooling systems on the reactor. I'm no engineer and I'm not willing to make any judgments one way or another, but I'd love to know your thoughts on all of this below. After all, electric cars do have massive batteries we can pull power out of, even when the grid is not working. While most of the world is still very much dealing with a very present medical crisis that is the current global pandemic, China is slowly getting back on its feet after months of almost complete lockdown. And that means, among other things, that Polestar, Volvo's luxury performance plug-in brand, has officially begun production for the Polestar 2. While the facility isn't taking any chances, all of the photos that we've been shown show staff wearing personal protective equipment. The region's flattened infection curve means that Polestar is very confident it's now safe for production to start, certainly more than it was a few months ago. Initial deliveries will be to European customers, with Chinese and North American customers following later this year. Sadly, Kiwi buyers, though, will have a little bit of a longer wait. With entire countries around the world on lockdown, and people desperately just trying to survive. Emissions from transportation and industry have plummeted as people have stayed home and avoided travel. And that's had some great impacts around the world on air quality. But inexplicably, the US EPA quietly announced early on Friday that it would be suspending all enforcement of air quality regulations, blaming the current epidemic. This means that industries are now effectively self-policing their emissions, and even if they choose to ignore regulations, won't be penalised for it, as long as they blame the virus for making them emit more nasty things. Yes, folks, this is a get-out-of-jail card that I cannot believe, and frankly, it could make things worse for our planet in the short term, even though our carbon footprints are all pretty small right now. And finally, if you've followed this channel for a while, you'll know that we've covered Tesla's decision to turn off supercharging, as well as DC quick charging, on any Tesla that's been in an accident and then salvage titled after that point, meaning those who purchased a Tesla at auction and rebuilt it are suddenly finding they've got a car that looks great and works fine, but refuses to charge at anything faster than they can manage from a home charging station or a Tesla destination charger. And this week, our buddy Rich from Rich Rebuilds discovered that his rebuilt Tesla Model S is no longer allowed to use either the supercharger network 
or any DC rapid charging stations. And he made a rather tongue-in-cheek video about exactly what life is like for him now that he's got a car that takes hours rather than minutes to charge. It's well worth a watch and, well, it'll certainly keep you entertained for sure. I've left a link below. And on that note, that's your lot for today. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show and if you've got some feedback, you know what to do. Make sure that you hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And of course, while you've got a browser open, why not switch to New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company? It's super easy to make the switch. And if you do, you'll be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto cleaner, greener power that will keep this country beautiful. We'll be making some more fun content for you next week. But until then, please stay safe. Remember to wash your hands and stay healthy. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.